Talk to us about how this acquisition, Tim, expands what NerdWallet can offer. Yeah, Emily, our, our vision is a world where consumers make financial decisions with confidence. And given that we're growing and profitable this year, uh, we thought it would be an opportunistic time to expand into the world's second biggest market. Uh, the UK uh, is very well versed in uh, financial comparison shopping already, um, but we thought there was a big opportunity to also bring content and helpful tools and calculators to the market as well. So talk to us about what insights you're getting from consumer behavior based on the information that you have about customers' financial moves right now. Yeah, so we're clearly in a time defined by the pandemic as well as government stimulus. Uh, we're seeing a ton of interest um, in things like life insurance, uh, refinancing as interest rates are coming down, especially on the student loan and the mortgage side. And we're also seeing uh, a big headwinds in terms of interest in uh, travel credit cards and uh, uh, things like that. And then the, the other interesting trend we're seeing is just huge amount of interest in uh, getting into the stock market. I think the stimulus checks, um, as well as the uh, rise and fall of the stock market, is having a big impact on retail demand. So we're seeing record numbers of people signing up for uh, you know, the free trading accounts that are available now as well. So what are your plans for future growth, especially given that if there's only one thing we know for sure about the future, it's that there's more uncertainty ahead? Yeah, there's certainly more uncertainty ahead, but, um, you know, in fact, we're seeing a pull forward in this offline to online trend and consumers finding financial services online. Uh, so we think there's many more countries uh, ahead for us, and we're also thinking more about getting deeper in a lot of the verticals we're already in. Uh, we think there's a lot of opportunity to just make money easier for a lot of people. So what do you see ahead you know, obviously, you know, there is a lot that we don't know, but what are you planning for as you map out your strategy and scenarios for the company's future? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we've always felt it was important uh, to maintain a lot of financial discipline in terms of how we invest. Uh, we've really only done one round of financing historically. We try to run at a really healthy margin. And I think that's really important because uh, during times like, uh, you know, 2020, um, we uh, can be more opportunistic um, about uh, finding great investments and, you know, finding teams with a lot of aligned missions such as Know Your Money. Uh, so we're definitely still very active in thinking about what's next there as well. Um, we're also investing really heavily in our membership experience. Uh, we think there's a big opportunity to democratize financial advice uh, to everyone. And that really starts with uh, understanding a little bit more about our consumer so that we can nudge them when they should do smart things with their money. And what about your global ambitions, given this new acquisition? What does that look like? Yeah, so, you know, it's going to be a long road ahead. Uh, we have a very long-term orientation. We're thinking 10, 20, 30 years ahead. Um, so we're definitely going to learn a lot of lessons um, entering the U.K. It's our first international market. Um, but there are very uh, many other markets to enter as well. Um, each market is quite different. Uh, for example, uh, there's a big focus on car insurance comparison there, as well as uh, energy shopping, uh, which are less prevalent in the United okay. States. Uh, and I think there's many differences in many other markets as well. So we're going to keep an eye on those.